tomorrow I am flying out to Seattle and then driving a couple hours south to a race called the Bigfoot 200. And uh, I've teamed up with Rob from Training for Ultra. He's doing the Triple Crown of 200s this year, which is the Bigfoot 200, Tahoe 200, and the Moab 200 slash 240. <laughs> and I reached out to him like a couple weeks ago and I just said, hey man, I don't know what your plans are for this, but I think we could put together a pretty sweet documentary. Let's talk. And so we started talking and plans just happened like really quickly. Like we just really hit it off. Turns out originally I thought maybe we'd do like a full feature length movie, but the more we talked, it was kind of like, well, maybe we could put together some sort of uh, series like almost like a TV series at the beginning of the year I did this like goals video where I threw out a bunch of goals and one of my big goals was to do like a big documentary project focused on really anything but I was really hoping that it would be focused on uh, ultra running and so this is it I'm doing it really excited to get out and see what the 200 miler culture is like uh, Bigfoot 200 is a race that I've had my eye on for a couple years maybe eventually do it someday um, but yeah, out there in Washington, it just looks amazing. <laughs> Western States was just a couple weeks ago, and now I'm going on another trip to film at another race, the Bigfoot 200. This trip here in August, and then in a month, going to the Tahoe 200, and then the month after that, uh, Moab 200 or 240, whatever you want to call it. This trip is longer, a couple, it's like five days, uh, because the race is like five days long. <laughs> Also, something pretty funny that happened is uh, on Southwest flights, you check in early and then you get put in order on who boards first. And they board in groups, A, B, and C, and then numbers after that. I got the best boarding number. I got boarding A1. That means I'm first on the plane. I can pick any seat on the whole plane. Which one should I pick? Yeah. There you there go. There you go. Thanks. You're good. Alright, here we go. Denver first and then after that. See ya! It's all cloudy and everything. Uh, I need to find a bed in the my car. Alright, so one thing I learned, if you have a national rental and you paid for an SUV, you need to ask them because they don't put the SUVs in the actual aisle. So I almost drove off in my car because I was pissed and running out of time. Pulling it around now, apparently. This is much better. A Jeep Grand Cherokee. Okay, making a quick stop at REI to get a few like camping related supplies that I couldn't take on the plane. Turn left onto Washington 7 South, Mountain Highway East.
All right, so been getting a lot of great stuff at the free race meeting, and then went to dinner afterwards. Just checked into my hotel, but we're driving now to Rob's campground. Uh, we're gonna get just a little bit of footage there, just kind of like close out this first day. But yeah, this place is beautiful. There is absolutely zero cell phone coverage anywhere, so that's been fun. <laughs> This is my hotel for the night. Pretty sweet bed. It's got a kitchen. Um, night before Bigfoot 200. I am so tired at this point. It's 12.30 Indiana time, so that means I've been up for almost 22 hours. Pretty tired right now but I need to start charging batteries. I need to dump memory cards onto my laptop. I need to figure out what the heck else I'm doing. So <laughs> that's what I'm gonna do. Everything's charging down here. Should be good to go in the morning as long as I wake up. <laughs> So we just sent the runners off. Here's the bus right there. That was the last bus. They're on their way to the start. It's about a two hour drive from here. And I'm gonna be following the buses the whole time. So that's good. <laughs> It's all starting. Here we go. This is it. Bigfoot 200. Well, in two hours it's gonna start at the start line. All right, made it to the start line. Two and a half hour drive. Start line is right over there. The place is incredible. Uh, got a pretty good parking spot too, so I can probably come back and forth and get different cameras. All right, so the racers just left. Um, I'm sitting here eating a bagel. Oh, I'm starving. It's kind of weird right now. Um, the next aid station I'm going to go to is at 40 miles, which is going to take them all day to get to. I'm going to make another cup of coffee. All right, just went for like a mile and a half run out here on these trails. I didn't think I was gonna run, so I didn't take the GoPro, but then I was running and I wish I had the GoPro. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't take you guys along. But they got a drone up in the air. So the runners have been gone for an hour and 20 minutes. Um, ate some breakfast, drank some coffee, went for a little run. These trails are absolutely beautiful. Um, I think that well, I'll just show you guys. Let's go. I think that's shutting. It's automatic door. It's pretty cool. So, this is not the actual trail, but it connects to it, and it pretty much all looks the same out here in this area. But yeah, just look at this. Uh, all the green. Oh my gosh.
Yeah, this is so beautiful out here though. Um, already, the race just started an hour ago and I'm already like really wanting to come here next year. <laughs> So I'm going to get going. I'm going to drive to Johnston Ridge. I was talking to Howie Stern and he said that Windy Ridge is not really worth it to go to because um, the sun is behind you as you're trying to take shots. Um, as you're looking at Mount St. Helens, looking into the sun or at a degree other than having it directly behind you is optimal for a lot of situations. You really don't want the sun directly behind you because it just washes out everything that you're filming or photographing. So I'm going to go to Johnston Ridge. Um, there's like, the thing that sucks is some of the most iconic pictures from this course are from this like rocky area around Mount St. Helens. It's like the uh, where the volcano like destroyed everything and it's just like rock and ash and everything but it's like really hard to get to like you have to hike in like 10 miles just to get to it which really sucks because I was hoping that that part would be something that I'd be able to get I've got about like a three hour drive ahead of me and then the runners will be at mile 39 when they hit this next area that I'm going to so it could very well be 10 hours from now. No, not from now, eight and a half hours from now. Let's see this thing again. Wow. That was awesome. Here's all my food. I just went to the grocery store and just got some stuff. Pop-Tarts, cereal stuff, coffee, some bagels, crackers, water. All right, I'm gonna try and find a place to go take some time lapses or a time lapse. Stopped on the side of the road, did a little bit of drone work earlier, and now I'm doing some time lapsing. Right here, that's the shot. I'm hoping that these clouds right here are moving a little bit, but I mean, they have to be, but. I'm honestly not sure. I can't see anything moving, uh, and I'm not and I'm not going to know until I put this into my computer and create a time lapse out of it. We're halfway through. Just doing a 12-minute time lapse, three seconds in between each shot, because I don't know. I don't want the clouds to be moving super fast. I just want them to be just kind of like slowly moving through the shot. So hopefully that's what's going to happen. But. It's 11.15 right now, overcast day. It's supposed to start raining tonight, so that could get really interesting with trying to film. right now uh, you can kind of see what it looks like clouds are being like kind of exciting it's gonna keep moving and uh, it's gonna be a really good one I just checked on this tracker he was just at mile 23 and he was going at 3.8 miles an hour so that would put him at Johnston Ridge mile 39 at like just after 7 p.m. 
So I've got about four more hours <laughs> to kill. Oh, look, there's the beach. Nice. Right there. Mount St. Helens, right there. But this is pretty. Yeah, buddy. Thanks. Got it, man. Thank you. Nice work. This is like one of the most beautiful spots ever. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Glad I got all those pictures of Mount St. Helens earlier though, because it's supposed to be right there. <laughs> it's a little hot, but I think I'm gonna go for a little run. I'm gonna try and jog a little. My ankle's feeling okay from this run, the run I did this morning. How we turned to the rescue. I was hanging out with him while he was shooting. I was telling him how I got dust on my sensor, on my camera somehow, even though I hadn't taken the lens off all weekend and how I forgot my blower tool at home. And he just like reached in his backpack. I was like, oh, need a blower tool? Here's a blower tool. <laughs> so I just ran back to the car, cleaned off my sensor, good as new. Now I'm headed back. Oh my God. Clouds have cleared. Check this out. There's like 20 people that came through and Howie was shooting them. And uh, the mountain was just covered in clouds. But now you can see it all. There he is. That's the master working. Gosh, he's so cool. All right, so Rob just came through 40 miles and uh, didn't stop very long. Just kind of got what he needed and got out of here. He does not have a headlamp though, which is maybe a problem because it's already eight o'clock and it's cloudy. So there's not gonna really be a sunset, so to speak. It's just gonna get dark fast. sweet thing about this Jeep is that down here, uh, you can't see it's all dark, but there is an AC plug like you have in your wall. I've got this set up right here and I can actually charge these batteries while the car's running, which is awesome. And then there's USB ports down here so I can charge basically everything, which is great because I was super worried about not being able to charge, but now it's no problem. And these batteries that I rented, they're used and I think they're like on their last legs because they're not lasting as long as they should. Then, turn left. This could get... Uh, Continue straight. Barely even see that guy. You're back online. You are on the fastest route. You will arrive at 8.13 p.m. Oh boy. This is gonna get sketchy. All right, so I just got to the next aid station and it is raining pretty good. <laughs> see? Uh, it's been coming and going. I was outside with my camera, a full kit, microphone, ninja recorder, battery, lens, everything. Started pouring and I like sprinted back to the Jeep and wiped it all off. If Rob is going faster than his overall pace, 
Like if he's really trying to get into this aid station, I've got about an hour. And that's if he's booking it. I don't know if he has a raincoat on him and he definitely doesn't have a headlamp, so. We'll see. All right guys, so holy crap, this storm is intense. <laughs> oh man, so much lightning, so much thunder. It's 1040, Rob and Julie just left. Um, they got 19.8 miles to get to the next aid station. The storm is crazy. I think I'm just gonna sleep here because this parking lot is flat and I don't really feel like driving two and a half hours through the storm when I can maybe wait a couple hours and it'll clear up. So I'm gonna go to sleep and check back in with you guys in a bit. All right, well, good morning. It is light again. We are at Norway Pass. It's 6.45 in the morning and uh, Rob has been on this 19 mile section for like 8 hours and 25 minutes. It's chilly. I can't imagine how cold they are. Man, driving last night was kind of scary. I was falling asleep. <laughs> Not actually falling asleep, but having a hard time staying awake while driving. My body like wants to be getting up. I want to be moving. I want to be drinking coffee. But I know that when Rob comes in, he's going to be wanting to sleep, so I'm probably gonna I'm gonna try to take advantage of that and sleep too. Here's the tents that they're allowed to sleep in. They get a limit of like a couple hours and they have to get up and get moving. I don't know. All right, I'm gonna head out, see what I can see. I really know why people love the Pacific Northwest now. <laughs> How you doing? Good job. Thank you. Did you say 150 yards? No, like less than that, 50 maybe, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I've been on some crazy trail races before and had some long sections, but I have no idea what it would be like to do a 19 mile section through the night in a thunderstorm. <laughs> That was like probably worst case scenario for a lot of these people. One of the long, one of the super long sections. There's a couple that are like 18, 19 miles. But having one of the super long sections all night with a thunderstorm. <laughs> Very difficult race, not being able to see the spot trackers. Just not being able to get any updates. All right, just sent Rob off up that way somewhere. Uh, he's got an 11 mile section now. So I'll probably see him in like three and a half to four hours. No sleep yet. So I just had about the best luck you can possibly have for a photographer doing a time lapse. This started off, the sun was just behind the mountain and during the time lapse, it's come up and now it's shining right into the lens, giving these beautiful flares right here. This time lapse is gonna be awesome. Just made some coffee and some oatmeal and a bagel with some almond butter. I'm living it up right now. Edge, some of these roads. 
this is wild. So I just got some really good drone footage in this little valley right here. Every time you send your drone out and then it comes back safely, there's just this like huge sigh of relief. All right, so we just sent Rob and Julie on their way out of here. They got 15 miles to go to the next aid station. The next aid station is a sleep station, so that's gonna help them both out a lot. But hear thunder in the distance. It's rolling in here. What's happening? We are at Elk Pass right now, and they're going to road 9327. So there's 15 miles in between. And then there's 11 miles to the next one, but I can't go to that. And then 9.6 to Lewis River, probably meet them at Council Bluff in the morning. I think that's a good plan, actually. So we just took a super sketchy road to get to this station 9327 or something is what it's called. Yeah, it's just back there. But just walking up the trail a little bit to see what it's like. Um, that's been one of the most fun parts about doing this is just every aid station I go to, I walk or run about a mile out, half a mile maybe each direction to see what the trails look like. Oh, look blueberries yeah this is what I this is what I pictured it would look like yeah definitely from those bikes. That's crazy. Wow. All right, back to the Jeep. Nice Good. work, dude. <laughs> Good. They're gonna come from up there, run down this road to that aid station right there, and they're gonna take a left right out of the aid station and go. All right, I've been up here for like 30 minutes. So I'm gonna go back to aid station and try to ask the ranger um, where they are. Because, I mean, if they're seriously walking a lot, an extra five minutes per mile, it's like 15 miles. It's like an almost hour and 15 minutes, it could be. So, I'm gonna find out exactly where they are. Okay, so update time. Uh, Rob's sleeping. Um, he's wanting to sleep for like an hour and a half, but I think he's gonna sleep longer than that. He looked wiped out. Uh, he was not thinking clearly. Just lots of stuff going on. So he's in the sleep tent, and uh, right now I'm going to get a hotel because the logistics of how this is all gonna work out is like basically in the next 12 hours or so, I'll be able to see him once at one aid station. It just makes sense myself get a good night of sleep. So he's getting a bunch of GoPro footage, so that's helping. The problem right now that we're hoping, or you know, we talked about this a lot beforehand too, is that we don't want this to just be like a film about aid stations. Uh, so he's gotta get a lot of footage on this GoPro. It's gonna be up to me to cut together a story for each of these episodes. Um, yeah, crazy. Okay, so anyway, yeah, that's the plan. I'm going to get a hotel now, and it's like a two and a half hour drive to the closest hotel, so that's cool. Shower. Editing some photos in Lightroom. Till I fall asleep. 7.45 in the morning. 
I just checked Rob, and it looks like he is at mile 110, Lewis River. He's been sleeping for an hour and a half, maybe. So that's good. And then the next aid station after Lewis River, Council Bluff, and he's got 18.9 miles to get there. So I'm thinking he'll probably be there around like, oh, I don't know. I can't do math right now. I just woke up. Doing a time lapse of Mount St. Helens right now, which is going to be killer. But it's analyzing right now. So, yeah. I'm going to make some coffee and make some breakfast. Do some stuff on here, some pictures. I check Instagram. There's already a ton of Bigfoot 200 pictures out there. Howie Stern's killing it right now. So I'm going to edit a few and post a few of my own. Awesome. <laughs> All right, so I'm leaving now. Just been on the phone with uh, my family and Sean, who is our second cameraman. Um, we were just kind of chatting about plans and stuff because he's actually filming the end of the race because I got to go home. My daughter starts kindergarten uh, on the day that the race is going to end. So I'm not going to miss that. There's the one car left in the parking lot. There's the one next to me. I can't get in. Jeez. It's about a two and a half, three hour drive to get to this next aid station. And that's about how much time I have to get there. In 200 feet, turn right onto Mount St. Helens Way Northeast. All right, so we are almost there. We're driving on this dirt road for quite a while. Um, and it's slow going because of all these potholes and bumps and everything, but so sure is beautiful. Well, this is a bit of a tight squeeze. <laughs> But yeah, this road is freaking crazy. <gasps> and we're here. Wow. Nice. This trail of the runners come in on. And we'll see what's going on here. There's nothing up there? Yeah, there are other spots. Okay. So I can help you turn around here if you'd like. Okay. How far of a walk is it? Quarter Wait. mile. Okay. Uh, All right, so now it's a quarter mile walk to the aid station. This is as far as we that crew cars park. But I don't know. I think I still have like an hour before he's gonna get here. This is out here, man. This is way out here. This is nothing compared to what we just did. Yeah. We did this climb. It's hard to explain, actually. <laughs> I want to say it was like 6,000 feet in three to four miles. Nice. Like my legs felt great all day. And then we did those climbs. Yeah. And now, uh, we just need to food. Yeah, buddy. We got everything here. I'll be right behind you. Okay, well Rob came in. I got a bunch of footage of him on the A7 III with the Zeiss 25 and the gimbal. Uh, yeah, this combination is awesome. I love this lens so much for shooting this type of stuff. 
um, hiking back to the aid station now. Ran out about a half mile with him, maybe, give or take. Uh, just trying to get a balance of shots right now. We don't want the whole thing to be at an aid station. We don't want the whole thing to be running. Um, <clears throat> so we're gonna have to really work on getting stuff outside of the race too, like interviews, backstories. So yeah, these mosquitoes are pretty intense out here. Uh, it's all wet. So this is a uh, beautiful Pacific Northwest. I'm gonna take the drone up, although I'm scared to because there are so many trees. I mean, there's like no open areas. And it's a little bit, it's like sprinkling a little bit, so I don't know if it's about to rain. Uh, <clears throat> but I'll probably just take the drone up for a minute, try to get an overhead shot of the aid station and bring it down. And that'll be it. Now I'll drive to the next place. All right, I'm hungry again, so I'm making some mashed potatoes and coffee right now. Down here. Got the water boiling. This is gonna be so good. Every time the drone comes back, it's a good feeling. So this is kind of the setup I have. I've had going back here. Camera bag, drone bag, tripod, gimbal, stuff like that back here. And then the back. I know I've showed you guys this a little bit, but I don't know if we're giving you a little tour. Um, this is like lots of more equipment, clothes, tons of water. I'm gonna end up donating some water and snacks to one of the aid stations probably because I will not need it all. It was a pretty good drone flight. Pretty happy about that. Got some good stuff. Good, good action. Good action of the aid station. It's just nerve wracking flying this thing. Before I fly it again, I need to make sure I get all the footage off that card. Ever since I crashed into the lake last year, two years ago. I've made a point to get the footage off yeah, the drone nice. in between every flight. Okay. Something fell over in the back, but we're good now. So I'm going to to Chain of Lakes, which is cool because there's a place in Indiana called Chain O Lakes. It says that this aid station is 7.4 miles away and it's going to take 30 minutes to get there. <laughs> Probably because I'm driving on crap like this.
Glad I got a Jeep. <laughs> If any of you are thinking of running the Bigfoot 200 or 100 or whatever, any of the distances they offer, make sure the people you bring for your crew are tough people too, because this drive is not for the weak. Um, I've already driven 580 miles, and we're not even close to the end. So, there's also so many of these types of roads. Just make sure that the people you have on your crew are tough people, I don't know, experienced out here in this type of environment. Because it's not the same as a lot of other races. It's tough to get to these places. All right, made it to Chain of, Chain of Lakes aid station. This was another really hard one to get to. Parking is ridiculous. I'm just parked basically in a bush in some trees on the side of this little tiny road. But this trail is really freaking cool. I'm just backtracking a little bit towards the way the runners are going to come. And yeah. It's... Hey, hey. What's happening? How's it going? I'll put it into this aid station. Yeah. I feel like we met this morning. way earlier. <laughs> Have you slept yet? My God. <laughs> yeah, probably a little more than you guys. You guys look good though. I saw them at the last aid station, like exactly like this. Ooh, check this out. So if I did my math right, I've got at least an hour before I see Rob if he's going faster than he has the whole race. Like, but there's quite a bit of road section in here, so my ankle and Achilles are actually doing really well. Like just hiking around like a couple weeks ago, this would not have been possible. But going to physical therapy has really helped, I think. And uh, just time, just being patient with injuries, letting them heal, and then going and getting physical therapy, x-rays, MRI, I'll find out what the results were when I get back, maybe. Got an MRI, I don't know if I told you guys this, but I got an MRI Wednesday morning, and then flew out Thursday. Hopefully it's all good. I mean, I'm feeling pretty good right now. Could just be like all the excitement of being in this place. I can't believe how amazing this is. Like, I'm just having the time of my life. Just being able to hike on these trails, run a little bit, I'm trying to follow the instructions of my physical therapist and not run. Being able to be out on these trails and just walk and just move my body is just so amazing. After I sprained my ankle at Mohican, just not even really being able to walk around my house without pain. I haven't come to this point where I can just be out in these mountains at the Bigfoot 200 and just run around and play and hike. It's just such a gift. Nice work. Good job. Thank you all for watching and subscribing uh, and just following me along over the last couple years. These last few years of hard work putting up videos when no one was watching to this point where we are now, I mean, that's how you get opportunities like this is just keep putting in the work, keep doing your thing, whatever it is. I really think that you can do whatever you want. You just have to keep putting in the work. I just feel so incredibly blessed to be able to do what I do and to have a body that can move through these types of trails 
do this terrain and just have fun doing it. I'm so blessed. So thank you all for watching. Headed out already. No, no, we're gonna throw her in the van for oh, a little bit. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Nice. It just, it just it's sad to sit in there, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. You look great. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> That's funny, she said that everyone sitting at the aid station was just sad. <laughs> All right, so Rob just got in. He's sleeping. Um, sleeping for 45 minutes. I'm getting some snacks. And then I'm gonna try and rest my eyes a little bit too. I don't know. We'll see. It's raining though. This will be fun. He's sleeping. That's good. He needed to sleep. Got a timer set. Uh, when, when he gets up, I need to give him GoPro batteries that are charged and send him off. All right, well, that is it. I uh, just sent Rob off. He's at mile 142. And it's crazy. This, this is such an amazing event. Just wild, wild country out here. Really cool. But yeah, I gotta get home to see my daughter's first day of kindergarten. Uh, so I have to leave now. It's just not feasible for me to hit any of the other eight stations. He's got 20 miles until the next one. So that's gonna be a good nine or 10 hours probably, especially if it storms again, which it's supposed to. But we hired a guy to be at the finish line. So we'll get that and that'll be a wrap. This has been so awesome. <laughs> so, I just got back to Randall. This is the high school. Um, this is Rob's Jeep right here. I need to leave his keys with Candace. And I'm packing all my stuff up. And I need to pack all this crap for the plane. So I've got my suitcase like on the ground of the parking lot right now. So it's pretty funny. <laughs> back in Indy finally. Um, it was a long day of traveling and I'm super freaking tired. I basically just like slept the whole time. <laughs> Check in on Rob, see how he's doing. I think you're ready to do this all over again in about a month at the Tahoe 200. So thanks for watching and I will see you guys again soon. Bye. Hey, one more thing I wanted to mention before I end this video. I just got my uh, confirmation email from National Car Rental. And uh, in the email, it tells me how many miles I drove. <laughs> and I knew it was going to be a lot, but they say that I drove 884 miles on that Jeep, which is insane for a 200 mile race. And I didn't even go to the last two aid stations. So if you're thinking about crewing or pacing at Bigfoot 200, just think about that. It's a lot of driving. And oh my gosh, if you add in my trip to Indian back because that's part of this trip too it's like 80 miles each way so that's over a thousand miles for this part one of the Triple Crown of 200 documentary series a thousand miles of driving in the last like six days <laughs> oh my gosh okay that's it for real now bye